Oh, the stream went down. Our stream's gone down as well, apparently. Prepare for battle. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, this game just started. Uh, hello, Dota TV viewers. Um, let's get in. Hello, Dota TV. Hello, Twitch TV. Hopefully, we've got game three of Mushi versus Ferrari four thirty. Shadow Fiend versus Shadow Fiend. They go in the distance, and we'll see. I'm gonna come out on top of this one. It is gonna be Ferrari on the diet side, Mushi on the radiant. So far, Radiant's actually come out on top of more games than, than not. Yes, and both players actually starting off with different builds yet again. I thought that Wraith Band Branch Branch would be seen in almost every single game, but not this one. Ferrari going for the, the build we saw earlier from Dendi as well, which is the Wraith Brand and more Tangos. That the, the more aggressive player almost always gets the Tangos, too. Yes. Um, and Ferrari, I think, is a much more aggressive player than Mushi. Yeah, he's more more likely to be trading. I mean, you go this build, if you're not trading hits earlier on, you're doing something wrong. So It also allows you just when you're pulling the creep aggro off the away from the wave onto yourself, sometimes you take a bit of damage, so you want to have that HP regen there as well. So. Shadowfiend versus Shadowfiend, all about the first minute or so. If you can get a breaking lead there, you can just win the game yeah. straight up from there and control the rest. It's unlike the other matchups because there's no souls to speak of. All right, well, we'll check out the creep block for now. It looks like pretty good from both ends as far as I can see here. Ferrari, though, on that dire side does have the advantage, but it'd be actually slightly better for Mushi. Very small just a difference, tiny bit. but he is on his high ground where the mind games come in. Who's going to get these denies? Mushi gets the first soul, Ferrari gets his right back, both with the deny, so... It's more about the souls than getting last hits or denies. You don't care which one it is, you just want souls ASAP. Yeah, and here's already a playstyle difference between the two players. You'll see Ferrari huddle way closer to the creep wave. I don't know why I can't draw on the river, and Mushi will rarely, rarely come up to that yeah. melee creep wave. It is a lot easier to time those last hits when you're in close proximity, which is what Ferrari's thinking. Like, you can kind of bait your opponent with, like, fake denies if they don't know if you're going for it because you're like in melee attack range, so. Mm. Yeah, he's using the travel time. Ooh. Ooh, misses a last hit with the raise. Mushi, pretty far ahead in terms of souls. Five versus two for Ferrari. But Ferrari, he does have the wave controlled on his side. But at the same time, this is too warm. he's three creeps behind already in terms of just what? actual he creeps just, alive. He just, he just missed like three creeps in a row that he could have got. Like, Mushi missed the last hit and then he could have just denied it after, but he, he let Mushi like right click it twice in a row, so. Really bad start for Ferrari here, Mushi. Looking really good. Yeah, Mushi does have more base damage, or he does have more damage. He does two more damage, and but two damage is two damage. Like that's not. It really damage. depends on how much Mushi gets from this creep wave. Because if he gets like three or more from out of five, then he's gonna be really far ahead. But if he only gets like one or two, then he's all good. He and... Both melee creeps didn't get the range one. He's looking. He's doubling Ferrari on soul. Twelve souls to six. They're gonna start trading raids here. Ferrari getting aggressive. Mushi's got Tango's out though, he gets him with a long raise as well on Ferrari. That's really good for Ferrari. He might have taken a lot more damage, but he forces Mushi to not see us under the tower. So it might have looked like a bad trade in terms of HP, but in terms of momentum, Ferrari had to do something to equilibrate this, to equalize this okay. creep score. So if he trades regen for denying him CS. As for Ferrari, Rush is a magic stick. How do, you, how do you feel about this over going for the fast bottle? It depends on what position you're in. If you're ahead, I say you go for bottle, so you can just keep, keep raising out and keep trading harass. But if you're behind, and it might come down to a man fight, magic stick will be pretty useful, especially since you're very limited in the gold that you have to use. Ferrari just being very aggressive with the extra region he has. Pop the south just for a couple hundred HP just so he can trade hits and he's gonna just gonna spam that C raise at Mushi from afar and try and bully him a little bit, but Mushi is Again the creep wave is like right where Mushi wants it to be. Yeah. He can just passively farm. He's got his bottle coming out already and the two minute rune did spawn bottom is gonna be a regeneration rune, but I don't think Mushi is that interested in going all the way down there to get it unless but yeah. if he gets that and then he gets boots, That's he true. can be he can have the upper hand for at least the next five minutes, I'd say, because he's just not at risk of dying. And then he can always trade or harass. He has boots, so he can bounce out whatever he wants to, and then just regen up and force Ferrari to suffer suffer heavy damage economically. The fact they're even on souls, max out of 16. Ferrari now gets his 17th as he hits level four, and uh, 
We'll see Mushi only with three CS ahead, so he had a much bigger lead earlier but on. But he's going to get the regen. Yeah. Okay, so no boots just yet, but uh, he actually goes Magic Stick instead for now, so... One thing to take a note of is Ferrari already seeing on two Magic Stick charges, so... Uh, if you ever do go in for the kills, how many Magic Stick charges you have can make a bit of a difference there. Alrighty. And Mushi is a little bit behind in terms of experience, just a tad bit though. And level 7 is really important in this matchup. I say level 9 is fairly important too because if you man fight, the minus 3 armor makes a very big difference. Or if you want to go for a Requiem with a <laughs> lucky end. When you said level 9, I'm thinking, yeah, those, those YOLO Requiem of Souls is where it's at, but. I think that was the, uh, F the famous FY vs CTY SF vs SF that went like 30 minutes, won by a clutch Requiem of Souls. That yeah. spell's really good. Now we'll see right now, 17 and 11 for Ferrari, 19 CS, 7 denies for Mushi, so... Oh, Ferrari actually committing to the rune, he doesn't have eyes on either rune, but we'll just commit to bottom and he will guess correctly, he will get an invis, and Mushi will have eyes on it. Mushi using his regen to try and tank a lot of the mid tower, but I do not think it's going to go down to a tower death, it rarely does in this sort of 1v1 yeah. format. If your tower does get low enough, you just man up and have to fight him. So it's, I guess maybe you try and force your opponents into a into a bad spot by doing tower damage. But mm. especially considering that it's bottom crawl allowed, once you hit level seven, you can double race and the creep wave's instantly dead. So to push a tower is a big ask. It's gotten to that point where raises will dominate the creep waves and we'll rarely see shadow fiends in a range of each other actually to hit. But Ferrari will pop his invis. Let's see if Mushi is scared at all of this. If he gets the see, if he gets the close range rage, okay, Mushi is scared. Yeah, as he should be. Yeah, I think he knew there was an invis rune, and with that, he'll play back, and that gets Ferrari a couple free last hits, and also denies here. So, you can talk about just racing down creep waves. Normally, you don't get to see too many denies after like the first five six minutes because of the ra the max out raises, but the man up and actually Ferrari taking a hefty damage here has a salve and Mushi. Salveless on the Radiant side, so he's gonna have to bottle Crow or bring him out, out bring himself out some more regen. And Ferrari opting for the Observer Rewards again. The only problem I have with Ferrari's Observer Rewards is they overlap so much distance. Like this whole entire area is overlap and double covered by the Observer Rewards. I would have much liked him to see it placed over here, uh, down the opposite side of the Radiant River, but at the same time, he didn't really have a good opportunity to do so. And he will have control of the room, so immediate yep. payoffs. It does, I guess, the, the two main objective is A, see runes and B, see the high ground mm. across the ramp. So, end of the day, there's overlap, but he achieves the, his two objectives yes. with, with the runes. Yes, he does. So, Mushi forced to bottle Crow, and we'll see himself bring out a belt of giant strength and some observe wards of his own. Last game, he went for the sentries, which I don't know if I, how much I agree with the sentry wards. Oh, sorry, that was game one with the pucks, but I like I, I like just getting your own observe wards up so you can see the runes yourself and know if your opponent gets a, a game breaking rune. And here we will see the builds start to differ. Uh, brown boots and then Wraith Band and Magic Stick and Bottle are all standard. After this is where some people get Treads, some people get Phase to try and kite with Shadow Fiend, some people go Tranquils and Aquila for Mass Armor, some people go Mech. I like really mech build. I've, I've seen the Mech build do really well in the Mech build is, is really strong in Shadow Fiend for Shadow Fiend. You really do need the armor. This thing stands here, dead even more or less on CS, 32 CS to 31 right now, and Mushi already saying to tank up with the Belt of Giant Strength as uh, Ferrari. His treads not even, he's got the boots, but nothing beyond that, so. Treads is just so good for man fighting. The attack speed that you get from it is incredible yeah. in terms of Mushi's how much actually ahead by like 220 net worth. He's actually, that's a decent lead as far as net worth is concerned, even though the CS is not in his favor. Mm. Well, that salvage coming out from Ferrari is going to put him behind by a little bit. Yep, but still, he hasn't died. So that's yeah. good. Mushi actually going to bring, bring some salvage of his own. This just means he can actually tank like two raises of Harass and then still come out on top. But he's going to get his way pushed into his tower. Ferrari can do some good tower damage here. He can't yeah, contest the rune. He's got an illusion there, which Mushi is going to raise down, but... Oh, and the rune doesn't spawn there. That's a big loss for Mushi. Yeah, Ferrari's not even going for the rune. He's going to fight Mushi. Mushi can get zoned out, and Ferrari can get the rune. Mushi and doesn't have boots. Tower damage. This could be game it. Game over. He's got wand. He's got salve. He's going to maybe salve on the high ground. Is there going to be raise? He's going to hide fog him. Turns around. He jukes it. Mushi can get out of there, but he's still got no boots. As a wand, he's going to turn and raise. Double raise. Long raise is there. Oh, he misses one. Gets him in the end. Ferrari 430 wins the SF versus SF battle there.
Brown boots coming into play. Yeah. What was that crew? The crew was sitting mid. Didn't have boots on it though. Shadow King has his belt of strength. I think he actually should just stand his ground at that point. Because if he doesn't, he's going to either have to take a long way around and lose out on a lot of e uh, economy or he's just going to die like that. Yeah. So I think if you get belt of giant strength, you have to hold your ground. If you get boots, then you, can, you have more options. He even had the salve as well. So he could have, he had the option to heal up after that. Ferrari himself did not even have a salve. Mushi tried to actually salve him between some last hits, it looks like there. But so. again, Mushi did get unlucky with the rune. Had the eight minute rune spawn on top, yeah. it had been a half useful rune.